so uh, I'll start from main points. Maybe one thing is uh, you will see that I uh, uh, all text is in some colors. It is not accidental, but I don't want to talk much about this. Uh, sometimes, uh, if somebody is interested, we can get into discussion. This there is some uh, some uh, method in this uh, madness. So. We have here this traditional classification of the inquiries, qualitative and quantitative methodologies, then measure and magnitude, then structural methodology, then structure and invariance, and structure of information. So what we have, uh, well, the traditional division of uh, inquiries of uh, any time is uh, dividing uh, methodologies into qualitative and quantitative. And the key tool uh, in the former in positive methodology is classification of objects of study. Where classification means partition of the set of objects uh, of study based on the criterion whether the object has given property or not. Partitions of a set S, separation of S into a class of disjoint subsets whose set union is S correspond uh, to uh, in a one-to-one -one manner to equivalent relation. Equivalent relation is A is, uh, every A is uh, in relation with itself. Uh, if uh, it is symmetric A uh, equivalent to B, then B to A, and then it's transitive A equivalent to B, B to C, then A to C. So uh, partitions is this classification and it corresponds to equivalence relation. Uh, members of the partition uh, are called equivalence classes or classes of, of abstraction. All partitions of a set S, or in other words, all equivalence relations defined in S have a highly non-trivial algebraic structure. So here we have first occurrence of this. We uh, uh, are talking here, if you want to classify uh, um, uh, classifications, we are getting into a quite deep uh, algebraic study of structures, but that's uh, probably not so important at this, at this moment. And uh, we can combine um, uh, equivalent relations or partitions uh, by uh, considering uh, a refined partition into smaller parts uh, uh, consistent with both original uh, partitions. And this may seem very simple or even primitive. Uh, class classifications or taxonomies are the earliest intellectual tools of humanity. They are uh, traceable in basically all uh, uh, cultures, uh, those highly developed industrials uh, and those who are, are more traditional. And <clears throat> uh, the question is, does modern real science uh, employ very different quantitative, sophisticated methodology. We have a sharp tool of the concept of a number. We measure magnitudes characterizing our objects to obtain their numerical values. The word measure in the empirical context is usually considered synony synonymous uh, with magnitude. The need for cl uh, clarification of this concept was recognized a long time ago. For instance, Helmholtz uh, uh, consider this, this is 1922 is publication, but uh, much earlier, Helmholtz con considered um, uh, the issue numbering and measuring from epistemological viewpoint. That uh, this is not as obvious as uh, it looks like at first sight. And uh, Helmholtz at this time introduced distinction of extensive and intensive magnitudes. The extensive magnitude, uh, for every extensive magnitude, there exists a physical process in which greater magnitude can be produced from smaller. Otherwise, it is intensive. And typical examples of the former are energy or mass. Of the latter are magnitudes characterizing properties of materials, such as coefficient of diffraction of light. From uh, extensive magnitudes, there's only one step to the actual mathematical concept of the measure. Here is a key point, one of key points is people are using uh, uh, the word measure, uh, and this is natural, in natural language, we can use it as we wish, but we have to be aware in mathematics, measure has very specific 
and uh, meaning. And it's, uh, 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 you cannot consider a measure without considering some structure. And so uh, we have mathematical concept of a measure assigned numbers to subset of given set S, not uh, to elements of S. So here is the key point is, when we are talking about magnitude, we assign number to uh, object. When we are talking about measure, we are talking about measure of a set. And, uh, <clears throat> and these uh, sets which, are, uh, which we measure are not arbitrary. Now, so here is, in reality, when we talk about measure, we are talking about very uh, sophisticated structure. Well, this is called sigma orto lattice or sigma orto, uh, uh, sigma uh, uh, Boolean algebra, but this is not crucial here. Crucial is uh, measure it applies to set where magnitude, uh, when we are talking about magnitude, very often we are talking about uh, uh, particular objects. And uh, magnitude, Basically, it is uh, well known when we talk about, for instance, statistics or probability when we talk about uh, random variables. Yeah, random variable is example of uh, the assignment where to elements of some set we assign numbers. And of course, this kind of function is creating a partition uh, defined by uh, our random variable the word random is, is not crucial here. We could talk about just, um, uh, just uh, uh, variable, uh, but this is because uh, uh, all this started from probability and statistics. Very often people are talking about random variables even outside of this context. And then we have that uh, uh, when we have established some random variable or variable, we'll have uh, equivalence re relation. This equivalence relation is defined that two elements in S are equivalent if they have the same value of X. Now, if we assign to a value um, uh, to A value five and to B value five, then they are equivalent. They have the same magnitude. And <coughs> the elements of the set S can be identified with the state of the system. And two states are equivalent with respect to X if the system has the same values of X in both of them. So uh, here is first observation. The only difference between qualitative and quantitative methodology is in the time of the structure on the partition. Yeah, in a case of scientific approach where we are using uh, magnitude defined and variables, uh, we have that this uh, uh, partition is through numbers used. And uh, in a, a typical quality uh, methodology, we just don't involve numbers. But the question is, okay, is it so uh, important? Uh, here is like my article on this, uh, on this topic. Uh, and, um, my claim is that there is only one structural methodology with specific instances of the qualitative and quantitative methods. Traditionally, the former do not specify structures imposed on equivalence classes, although almost always there is some hidden structure, some order. Now, when we are talking about uh, quality, about classification, uh, very often we are ordering. We are not uh, using classification, which is chaotic, but there is, there is some order involved in this. Uh, all, not always this is emphasized, but uh, almost always it is present. And, <clears throat> uh, and the latter means quantitative methods project back the structure of real numbers, uh, their order, their topological structure on the original set of objects of study. So uh, my claim is there's no reason to claim that quantitative methodology is better than quality. There are uh, different instances and they have uh, their own advantages, disadvantages, and so on. 
And uh, here again, like my article where I was addressing these issues. And then uh, the, uh, uh, I would like to talk about uh, danger of misunderstanding. When people are talking about numbers, they are very often, uh, they are uh, uh, mystifying uh, numbers. They believe that numbers are obvious, that, oh, it's very easy to understand uh, something when we know uh, that there is some number assigned. You know, the cost of something, you know, we have money and we know what is the price. Uh, the problem is that uh, very often this assignment is uh, uh, totally um, conventional and uh, very often it's abused. Yeah, you know, that uh, it is manipulated for some, some uh, purposes. So uh, um, one thing is Mark was talking about this. So uh, in some sense, his comments today were like a good introduction to, to my uh, presentation. Uh, first, you cannot see numbers. The numbers are, uh, what you can see are numerals, uh, which represent some of the numbers. And we can have uh, also symbols in the form of constants, like A, B, typically the first letters of uh, Latin alphabet that are used for constant means. Some number, we don't say what number, but it's definitely one specific number. Or we can have variables, which represent not one number, but set of numbers. You can put into uh, for instance, X, which is typical symbol for a uh, variable, you can put many different numbers and this is the same variable. There are different numbers, but the same variable. And uh, what we have here and why we are using numbers, why they are uh, useful uh, is that uh, numbers are set or, um, uh, equipped with some structures. Yeah, so what is, Basically, why we are using uh, quantitative methodology is that we are bringing to our study something which uh, uh, has uh, quite complicated but very useful structure. As I mentioned, it could be a natural structure, topological structure, and so on. So. Uh, 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 when we talk about real numbers, we actually talk about the elements of the field of real numbers. Uh, I don't want to go into detail what does mean field, but there are very clear properties which we expect from any field. Uh, we, uh, in science, we are using field of uh, real numbers. We are using sometimes field of complex numbers. There are reasons why uh, we are using uh, real numbers in typical situations, but why sometimes it is useful to use complex uh, field of complex numbers. Uh, basically, we have two groups. Group is like algebraic meaning of, uh, in this, which I will not go farther into this, uh, with interrelated operations of addition and multiplication. And now here is where we can see uh, danger. Uh, uh, it is that uh, uh, most of people who do not go farther into study of mathematics are confused by teachers. Of course, teachers have best intentions, but a uh, uh, very misleading uh, uh, idea is to talk about real line. The teacher is drawing a line and saying, okay, we have real line. It is one-to-one -one correspondence between points and uh, numbers, we, we have to choose direction of the line, which tells us uh, in which direction numbers increase. Then we have zero, we have one. And then if we uh, consider number A, there will be one-to-one -one correspondence between point Q, which represents A, and number itself A. And here is the problem that uh, teachers stop at this, uh, this obvious. Where is this point? Oh, we just take a uh, distance between zero and this point has to be equal to A. And of course, this is vicious circle. Now, how do we know that uh, distance is A? So we are explaining 
where we place A by distance, and then distance we explain by going the other way around from the assumption that there is a point uh, uh, on the line which represents number A. So uh, this is highly, uh, uh, highly non-trivial uh, point. Yeah? Uh, it turns out that, uh, for instance, if someone say, okay, I can find point for number A using geometric construction. Yeah, but uh, you can use for many numbers, for instance, all rational numbers, but you cannot use geometric construction to find point corresponding to number uh, with numerical representation cube root of two. There's no such geometric construction. Uh, there are non-computable real numbers. You cannot use a computer to locate the point. Even worse, there is a majority, and here is the point, majority of real numbers in sense uh, uh, that uh, uh, uncountable, uh, un uh, uncountable uh, uh, set of real numbers, which we cannot define. Only countable number of uh, countable uh, set of real numbers can be defined. So the majority of real numbers we cannot define. So what we actually are doing, numbers are not familiar. We don't know anything about majority of numbers. What is familiar is structure of real numbers. And we are in our quantitative methodology when we introduce uh, variables or random variables, we are projecting this structure of, uh, for instance, real numbers uh, to, our, um, uh, to our domain of our study. Uh, this is basically the same, uh, I will, because I said a little bit late, so I will not go into details. This is just a formulation of what I was saying here uh, in uh, mathematical terminology, which is not uh, so crucial here. And then uh, we can go to structural methodology. Uh, I said, okay, uh, there is no quantitative or qualitative methodology. We can make this kind of division, which is uh, not important. There is only one structural methodology. And so what is this structural methodology? In a nutshell, it is an identification of the structures which describe the object of study. These structures can be defined on the set of potential objects of study, on their states, or on the subsets of this set. And I mentioned uh, before that, for instance, a measure requires first the identification of the structure of measurable sets. And it, is, uh, it can be proved uh, well, it was proved in the like, beginning of the uh, um, 20th century that uh, if we deal with infinite sets, then uh, there is no possible way to introduce uh, measure uh, uh, where, for which all subsets will be measurable subsets. So always you have to select some subsets which, which we can measure. And uh, this explains, for instance, uh, Banach-Tarski uh, paradox, which is saying that every three-dimensional object you can divide into finite number of pieces, uh, uh, like every uh, ball you can divide into finite number of uh, pieces, so that when you uh, reassemble uh, these pieces, you can get two identical balls with original ones. So you can uh, borrow from the bank big ball of gold, you cut it properly and then you get two original balls. One you return to the bank and you have another. Why it is impossible? Because these pieces are non-measurable. So basically non-measurable uh, sets are just out of our study. And now uh, structure environments. The concept of uh, the concept of the structure is not simple. I, uh, it will, uh, I will use this extremely general description that it is a set in which subsets are invariant with respect to some groups of transformations. Uh, transformations are bijective mappings, mappings which are on turn one to one. And uh, uh, in our methodology inquiries, we can think about groups of transformations which move elements of the set S with some equivalent relations in such a way that all elements always stay in their original equivalent uh, class. So if we have partition, we transform all set 
all points, all elements can move, but they always be moving, staying within uh, their equivalence class or their class of abstraction. And now when we uh, have this, uh, we are coming, I'm just looking at uh, uh, the clock, I should see you soon. Uh, so study of information. Uh, typically people start thinking about uh, um, study of information starting from Shannon's uh, famous article. But actually I would say much deeper, philosophically deeper. I don't say that Shannon's work is not important. It was extremely important for engineering uh, issues. But from the point of view of understanding information, Hartley's 20 year older uh, article is much, much deeper. Uh, in Shannon's approach, we start from uh, two possibilities, entropy, which is a finite case, entropy for uh, continuous case. And then uh, I was surprised that uh, in studies of information, nobody ever is uh, uh, looking at uh, page 49, where uh, Shannon definitely made mistakes. This mistake uh, is always corrected in textbooks of information theory. For instance, here is uh, one of uh, uh, classical uh, textbooks of information theory for engineers. Uh, it, is, uh, it is corrected, but nobody is paying attention to this uh, error. The error is uh, about connection between these two uh, entities. They are absolutely not related. Uh, what uh, error uh, says that we go from discrete case to continuous case uh, through the limit. If you go through the limit, you always get infinity. So here is very clear error. And then there is an issue that basically uh, the idea of using entropy in Shannon's form for uh, saying that we are measuring or finding magnitude of information in my opinion would be better expression is uh, questionable. Yeah, if this does not go, if it goes to infinity with refinement of, uh, of, of measurement, then uh, uh, from a mathematical point of view, it is useless. There is a way to go around this. And uh, I published uh, 15 years, you know, more than 15 years ago article on this. So uh, I will not stop here or this is this article. So uh, now, uh, what is the issue when we, uh, what uh, is happening uh, is that basically uh, entropy is, uh, could be uh, used in the way how like Archimedean metaphor. Yeah, we have here a uh, bucket with water. We want to check what is volume of the crown. We put crown into uh, the bucket and then we see how much water was. Uh, removed, and then we know what is volume. But it doesn't mean that we can say anything about structure of the car. Yeah, so uh, because of this, uh, I would say Hartley's approach is uh, much, uh, much better. Yeah, he is talking about what one of the things which is critical for all this is he's talking about invariance with respect to, uh, to uh, uh, to the way uh, how information is encoded. Yeah, so here we have this invariance and Hart, uh, Hartley is talking about primary symbols, which are states of physical system. He's not saying information is physical, but it is uh, clearly uh, you can find in this article. And he's saying, okay, if you want to have scientific study of uh, information, we have to eliminate psychological or conventional characteristics. So he is developing uh, his uh, study of measuring of information, starting from states of physical uh, system. And then uh, he is looking for invariant uh, uh, assignment of uh, magnitude. And then we have, uh, uh, he derives this uh, disregarded after the Shannon uh, formula. But he is clearly saying, this formula is when we consider that all physical states use are equivalent. If they are not uh, equally likely, then 
there is need to consider some structure. And then there's no general formula which we can describe. Here it actually comes channel and we can say, okay, uh, we can uh, use uh, we can use uh, uh, probability to describe in some way structure, but probability is not describing structure at all. What if you get uh, a book where it is written? In this book, there are twenty three thousand A's, fifty eight uh, B's, and so on. It is useless. Yeah, you you wouldn't get any information. So here is, Mahatma doesn't go farther with very clear ideas what to do, but here I see the, the starting point is that we should, we can start from Hartley's approach and then we can say, okay, we introduce structure on this physical state of uh, the system, which uh, in which we have information is uh, encoded or encoded uh, and uh, based on the structure, we can develop, for instance, numerical values or more important for me, structural characteristics of information. Okay, sorry for going a little bit be beyond the time. That's all. Uh, I'm not sure if I can expect any questions, Mark. Uh, okay, so uh, a couple of comments. First, thank you, Martin, for a very interesting lecture. And it's good that uh, on the one hand, it supports the importance of structures and connection between structures and information. And this is one of the main principles of the general theory of information. And second, that uh, in this, in our conference, we have uh, a cluster of presentations about information in numbers and information about numbers, because numbers are maybe the most important mathematical uh, structures uh, in the contemporary society. So your lecture gave a very good exposition of all these important topics and suggested, uh, I think, a very reasonable approach to scientific methodology.